most busted AI and machine learning stream on Twitch. I want to go back to that, um, what was it? Uh, shoot, it was um, causal, re uh, causal reinforcement learning. Uh, with Elias Barenboim at uh, ICML 2019. Was it 2019 or 2020? I think it was 2020 actually. The video. Why should be like have certainly have safe 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 search at least moderate when I'm streaming live. So that's a good idea. Let's see here. All right, part two and two. Oh no, no, I have to watch it from. I got my impulse blocker on. Let me watch it from within. There we go. Now YouTube doesn't know what I'm doing. There we go. It was 2020. Hi guys, um, I hope you had a, a good chat during the break uh, with the other version of me or myself. Uh, thanks for your patience for the ones who survived the first part. Um, let's start talking about the CRL itself. Uh, the moment I think is the most exciting part of the the tutorial. Um, the uh, the idea is like uh, CRL new learn challenges and learning opportunities. Speed this up. Uh, the idea we try to so like all right last week so we had gotten a little bit through this the last time I'm trying to figure out where we got um, generalized policy learning. Right, so this was an example that deconstructed that kind of showed something about was it the whole yeah the whole kind of if you don't have so you have a confounder here and you use some kind of causal Thompson sampling thing like he yeah he deliberately had constructed this example where e of y given dx and e of y given x were different. Generalized policy learning big picture. It was a table of contents. What was that? Oh, well. Here we go. Here's task number two. Where and when, or when to intervene. I think we made our way through that. Um, want to find some of the later tasks you mentioned. Uh, property two. There we go, counterfactual decision making. Let's start here. Uh, an interesting one, I would like uh, you to, to think about that, that we are gonna go into layer three now. Uh, the agents usually act in a reflexive manner without considering the reasons or the causes uh, for behaving in a particular way. Whenever this is the case, they can be exploited without never realizing. This is a general phenomenon that uh, uh, in online learning, whenever the agents optimize based on the Fisher and randomization, what I mean is like, uh, in other words, they do distribution. Uh, which includes all uh, non -L -L -R 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 -L -C -L. Okay, now let's just parse this a little bit. So agents act in a reflexive manner without considering the reasons or causes behind, uh, for behaving in any particular way. Whenever this is the case, they can be exploited without never realizing. And this is a general phenomenon in online learning. Whenever the agent optimizes by Fisherian RAND, uh, RAND, the due distribution. Okay. Um, I've tried to parse this a little bit. The idea is that, so Pearl makes a big deal about, about this in his book, that there's a difference. Uh, if, if we look at causal decision theory, that, or the cause, or, or, or the, you know, causal philosophies take on decision theory, we see that there's this distinction between an act and an action. So you know, typically, this is described using this idea called acceptance that the non-causal, causal insensitive, ignoring the causal structure. 
this thing called uh, so say new comes problem. So new comes paradox rather. Uh, so uh, new comes paradox also referred to as new comes problems. A thought experiment involving a game between two players, one of whom is able to predict the future. Blah blah. It's a big th big deal in decision theory. The, there's a reliable predictor, a player who is and two designated boxes and two boxes designated A and B. The player is given a choice between taking only box A or taking both boxes A and B. The player knows nothing. Uh, box A is clear, which always contains a visible thousand bucks. Box B is opaque, which is and its content has already been set by the predictor. If the predictor has predicted the player will take both boxes A and B, then box B uh, uh, contains nothing. If the predict predictor has predicted the player will only take box will take only box B, then box B. Uh, contains a million dollars, otherwise it uh, contains nothing. Right, so so here's a game theoretic thing. So, um, and so we see kind of this, this approach that comes by maximizing expected utility, but then uh, we talk about uh, causality, we have causality and free will, because you know, there's this idea uh, that, uh, yeah, so causal modeling people talk about free will, um, long story. But any, anyhow, that they kind of, according to this causal model where you have this idea of an intervention and the, the player can reflect on itself and what, it's in the, and what it might do, then you get a different set of payouts here. Um, and so here is the, you know, so you, and so you can calculate the expe expected payouts and you'll get a different expected payout each. And so you have two different frameworks for making decisions, most of which often uh, um, land on the same thing. Uh, just think of it like this, like this is what we do in reinforcement learning now. And this is what a causal reinforcement learning do, would do. We would make different decisions and, um, you know, perhaps in some situations or most situations, a better decision. Um, so... And so that's where this re reflexivity comes in. Um, oh, sorry, so it's saying that like in the first case, kind of in the reinforcement learning case, agents kind of just act like unthinking automatons, just kind of moving in a direction. No, like uh, what, is, what is it? When you're, so you're learning a policy and the policy is just doing whatever it maximizes expected utility uh, without any kind of introspection about why a certain utility was achieved. And um, and what we want is counterfactual reasoning. So we want an agent to say like, hey, I did this and got this result, but had I done something different, had um, things gone differently, I would have achieved the different results. Uh, and so this, this ideally should help us kind of, he says a more refined notion of regret, another way that might be a different way or of saying this, or perhaps a, 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 another true statement to make here would be that um, uh, it helps the agent reason more like f people do because, you know, unlike a reinforcement agent that you can train to play Mario a million times, you know, you, you play it a few times and you kind of figure things out, not because of like reinforcement learning process that's happened over your entire life that you can now transfer into Mario, but rather because you can reason about things like, oh, I see, had I jumped on its head, it would have died as opposed to me dying or something like that. Um, that's um, just... And here, this is Fisher in the sense that this is how it started the idea of doing the intervention, the system that we decide to flip the coin in a way in the context of the, the crops, the yield of the crops and the pesticides with the farmers because of the confounding yeah, bias about fish, by Fisher around 1935. I, 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 I read the history Ra as being Ra the precursors of that, like the, of reinforcement the learning. And That's we have the paper by Robbins in 52, 1952. Incidentally, he was a eugenicist. The stopping problem, uh, how many the samples problem. I need to be able to distinguish these things. You start, then we have the UCB, Lyon, Robbins in 83, and then you go on for the modern literature. And you have the MDP on the other side um, doing dynamic programming and so on, connected with that online or leveraging that. Uh, but anyhow, I could talk half an hour about history. Um, 
the 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 point being that you are using kind of L3 of Fisher and L2 L2 randomization. I go here to endow agents with the capability of performing counterfactual reasoning, taking their own intent into account, which leads to a more refined notion of regret and a new optimization uh, L3 type of function. Um, L3. <clears throat> counterfactual decision making. The question that we are trying to answer is how should one select the treat max star to a particular unit u is equal to u so as to maximize the expected reward y. Here is the graph that we have. We have the x, we have the y, and we have the u. Now we are calling the unit u. Now we are not interested in the in the having the average effect y given to x. That is the average over the u for all population. I'm taking whatever this is the unit. Uh, we are trying to this particular u. u. This so this idea here, this is a this idea is pretty common in in structural causal modeling, uh, which is the framework that Baron Boehm and Judea Pearl use. Um, the one that I advocate for, especially particularly in machine learning contents, because it's a generative model, and generative models are how agents. In cognitive science has a lot to say about how generative how about how agents reason about the world generatively. Now, uh, so this you here is say what not as what's what doesn't um this is not this is about a particular unit so like for this i guess for having units so think of this generatively as like say a, like a plate model right we sample from this u we say and then given you we get an x and given given x and u we get a y we sample a y and so that this u is a kind of all the all the all the um the context specific to one agent i think that's i think that's what he's saying that's the way i think about it person with this age sex uh yeah, sorry we go. age gender ethnicity uh, and all the buckets that make the person individual um uh, secondary questions if what if you have observational they lay l1 and l2 data applications are many in robotics uh, when the robots start having their own intent and uh and what i mean by that is like as we we just decide and sometimes we just want to do something and we don't even know the reason that we want to do this thing at the time, I think in the near future, robots may have this one. They don't know exactly what's the, imp the input that is, they are making them to act in some way. Uh, then it's pretty much similar to the human being here in this situation. Uh, is where counterfactuals emerge. But uh, it's enough for now. Medical treatment, the personalized medicine, uh, job training program to see that this particular individual, what's the effect of the, uh, the retraining program to this person. Now... In order to ground this discussion, I would like to talk about the greedy casino that is coming from this paper in the RIPS 15. Um, I'm thankful because reviewers allowed us to put an exotic example that I like. So, all right, this greedy casino warning, it's a cool example. Like, it, it's a, he, I think he tried to find a very simple toy model, right? Because it, 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 like something, something that kind of gets the core idea down in a few nodes. But I found... A, it's hard. I found it particularly hard to explain it to people in a, in a way that they understand. And B, um, yeah, I kind of feel like if you want to communicate something to the reinforcement learning community, you got to talk about board games or video games. I, maybe that's a cultural thing. Maybe that's just my perception. Um, uh, or robots. I don't know. Um, agents moving through a grid world just seems to be one that tends to stick more in terms of examples, but that's a that's a matter of PR, I suppose, but still. A lot, there's a lot of discussion at the time. Uh, we ended up getting lucky, but uh, the, the question is, like me, the work I think is good, uh, like in the sense that it is, it is a, a interesting story that I'll tell you now. Um, <clears throat> the goal is to find a policy pie so as to minimize the cumulative regret. Um, the casino hires a team of uh, experts, on, sociologists, psychologists, cognitive... I'm actually going to try and write this out as he's doing it. One sec. I'm going to be right back. I'm back. I'm back. Don't worry. See if I can't share my. Uh...
Gonna try and see if I can't add this something to. Oh man, what I'm doing here? Ooh. Oh man. I think that's, is it, is it working? I don't even know what's working. Can you see that? All right. Uh, all right, let's see if I can't. I have no idea how this, I don't wanna show current, I wanna show. We can. This. This app is nuts. I'm sorry. I'm a terrible streamer. I have no idea how. I <laughs> hey, you see these kids uh, just video gaming and with and just getting like multiple things happening at once, and it's because they watch YouTube. It's, they have the patience. Bro, I got no idea what's going on anymore. Um, okay, let's um, let's uh, switch to. Switch to this guy here. Just, all right, let's just keep going. And I'm gonna draw pictures. Science to understand the behavior of the humans or the, 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 the customers in the casino floor. And these customers, uh, you pay uh, 5 million bucks. Uh, these teams of experts, they, they, they go there. After three months, they come back with two big conclusions. Uh, uh, to justify the money. Was... All right, so we got like, uh, what are we doing? We got BD. All right, so he's. How's BD one node? That's That's confusing. First off, I'm gonna change the background because I hate this background. Uh, there we go. All right, so, uh, so what was that? B, D, this is like working. It took away my video. I have no idea. I'll, I'll figure out how to save this setting after I'm done. It'd be nice to put my video back in there though. Man. Uh, I wish I could just click on something and my video comes back. Um, I should probably be careful though, because this thing is so confusing. Oh, I messed it up. Oh well. Um, <laughs> BD dot 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 X. I'm telling you, this is an important example. I just wanted to kind of make it as clear as in some way um you could have asked me Type the first action. one that the determined factor of the behavior of the humans in the casino floor is the drunkenness level of the person whether they are drunk or not given some why, threshold why is it, why is it and the second bullet is like for this population if they are drunk usually they are attracted to more effusive things things that are calling attention like if there is a machine that is making noise noise in blinking people that is drunk is attracted to that and on the other hand, if the person is not drunk, usually they're in the shy mode and they, they are avoiding, they are going to the machines that are not blinking or not making noise. That's the conclusion of the study. Now I have this EVO or the greedy casino that um, decide to leverage that. Uh, the casino have two types of machine, machine X0 and machine X1. 
you have the reward y0 and y1 that is not winning and winning. And now we have this unobserved variable blinking machine, if the machine is blinking or not blinking. Um, and uh, both machines can be blinked or not, just with different likelihoods. And you also have the drunkenness level, if the person is drunk or not. Both of these guys, don't remember, remember the notation dashed here, dashed arrows and bidirected. This is the U. U unobserved is equal to B and D. Now observe for, unobserved for us. Um, quick note here. There is a regulation in Nevada that says that the payout has to be at least 30% of the time. Casino, whatever, that's the regulation. The casino learn how the customers operate based uh, uh, operate here, uh, based on these things that came from the study, these conclusions from the study, and decide to set the pay to set the pay payout structure as follows using machine learning. The 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 casino have this two different types of machine, machines, X0 and X1 in the casino floor, and the machines may be blinking or not blinking. Now, because they, they, they have- yeah, let's, let's walk through this. Cause, all right, so I mean, I think the thing that we're trying to get at here is that like, so this is getting so drunk and this is say like, you know, you know, if we're, if we're thinking um, of like cognitive science, we're just like, uh, think of this as like A, A for awareness, right? And so you're an agent and you're and you might be kind of aware just kind of reactively unaware unaware is kind of reactively reacting to your environment uh and what does that mean like it's suppose that you're you know it's late in the day you're on the internet and you know there's a hope and you're on some website like a you know facebook or a, or whatever technology website and you got these are companies that are hiring phd psychologists to figure out you know what the features to get you to kind of act in a certain way and and just kind of tempt you to do certain things and 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 uh and, and just kind of play to your impulses uh and when you're aware of those when you're aware and you're kind of sharp and you're ping and you know that this is happening um you're um you know, you're, you're much more conscious of what's going on. So we might think of this as like in a cog size sense is like, oh, my eye pen. Oh. Yeah, you know, this is why I should have bought the iPad Pro. I just want to save a little bit of money and now I just constantly regret it because don't know when this stupid iPad is going around. All right. Um, awareness, kind of system one and system two. So let's say that you're either like system two, you're just kind of in 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 kind of background mode. You're you're um, I should tell you. you're kind of in background mode, and you're just kind of thinking. Uh, you're not not super kind of plugged into what's going on. You know, so you're so you're kind of you're much more easily to get attempt to get attempted by things. This is why I like the real the. Uh, What's happening? This is why the um, uh, they they put candy bars at the cash register, and this here let's call this temptation, right? And um, you know, like uh. One or zero. There's two outcomes here, and this is this is your action. And let's let's move away from this and put this at like uh, put this R. This is a reward, right? Let's just call this T for short. T T is for temptation and and so what we're kind of trying to do is that we can say like if we look at his example here we got uh, so let's call this um, if the person's like system system one in a Kahneman sense uh, and it's just unaware
And then here we got system so bad, right? Two aware, right? And we got some, and then here, uh, and t equals zero, no temptation, t equals one, some temptation, and Uh, what are we doing here? We got uh, we got point one. This is the uh, so this would be all uh, the values for y. Uh, so the f y is for reward. So this is you know reward table. Yeah, and just imagine rewards go between zero and one for simplicity here. And we're gonna do here. Uh, x equals zero and x equals one, right? And so we got 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.5. So let's see here that when you're not aware, um, we see this kind of. So when you're not aware, you're just kind of walking around that like uh, when that when there's when you um, uh, the, the, you know so that when we're When there's temptation, uh, that you get uh, that you get more rewards for x zero than uh, than x equals one. Um, when there's not temptation, you get reward for action one than action zero. And uh, and, we, and I guess in this sense. Yeah, what's missing from the model is the actual intent of the of the, what's what's not what's implicit here as opposed to explicit is like the intent of the casino to rip you off, but because uh, they want the blind people, they want to tempt the blind people with blinking lights, so that they here so that they go to machines with less payoff. I think what we're going to see here is that. Um, So we're more likely to go for, yeah, so we see that, so t equals one. Oh, sorry, this is, I got the, now he's got the, uh, x is zero and x one. Okay, there's another source of kind of, so I guess x zero means, oh shoot. What, what, what we know is going to happen in the story is that he's going to go for the machine that, uh, if you're drunk, you're much more likely to go for the machine that, um, uh, yeah, so that's what we're missing here. We're missing, a, I guess we're missing this table. Well, let's just finish drawing his table, 0.4, point 0.2, point 0.4, point 0.2. And so what we're missing is, Basically, what ha what is so? What this is is the probability of and what is this? What's the cause here? Cause, uh, so X is caused by system one and tempt, uh, yeah. So this is P of X given T and A. Okay, so this is uh, this, so this must be the likelihood of of going for the machine. So that's at this. So this is this doesn't say anything about why, right? So we're going to for so if um, I'm kind of drunk or I'm not paying attention, and something is tempting me, I'm more likely to go for machine one. Uh, uh, as what shouldn't these the out of the zero, or oh, this is a joint probability. Huh, all right. Um, yeah, this is not particularly.
Uh, I'm gonna have to rewrite this example. I think I'm just kind of my own time. Like, it's not clear what these numbers mean. This is oh, all right. I, that's why because it's the expected value of pulling y1 given x, b, and d. I see. So I was wrong. It's not this. It's it's the probability distribution um, of y given x, b, and d, or rather of x, t, and a. All right, so then what do I see here? So then, well, then we so so we're actually missing. This distribution. All right. Well, let's let's let him play it, play on a little bit, and see where he's, see where he's going with this. I have people here in the community, in computer vision that were so great, and uh, and the machines have a camera that take a picture of the palpal of the guys, of the the guys or the ladies or the fellows. <laughs> and get the dilation of the pulpel to decide to know if they are drunk or not has some, uh, given some threshold. Then this is a simplified story, by the way. You go to the paper, but there is more refined versions of that. Now, the, the, based on the dilation, you can know if they are uh, drunk or not. If the machine is already blinking and the person is drunk, they will put a lower payout. If the machine is not, drink, not, not blinking, so drinking and the person is not drunk, they will have a lower payout lower as well. Payout. In other words, if the people is following whatever they discover, sure. that is the natural predilections or the nature natural way. All right, so that's what he wants to say. That like, if I'm drinking, if all right, so here like, I'm drunk, and we're blinking. I'm going to go to this machine. I'm going to go. I'm I'm going to favor this machine, which has a low. So that's the color. This is the. the oh man. Not easy to read this. All right, so I'm drunk and I'm in a machine that's blinking. I go for the, I go for this red one here, which has a lower payout, which is a lower reward. If I'm drunk and it's not blinking, then I still favor it. So they've designed it so so that. I mean, I, I, this color. Huh, I'm gonna have to kind of rewrite this in code. I think I'm gonna do that right now. I'm sorry. Uh, let me figure out. Well, how do how do I even write that? Let's uh, all right, fine. Let me just switch back to this because I just the way he's doing it is just so intuitive. All right, I'll just switch back. Um, sorry. Uh, okay. All right. Um, so let's just use this notation again. We got x. Uh, oh, nope, I'm sorry. Blind, or blinking rather, drunk, X, Y. And so we got, so what are our factors here? We got the probability distribution of X given, um, uh, uh, he's uh, given what is this blinking and drunkenness and the probability of why given blinking drunkenness and X and so And we could say, um, so X, the support of X equals some domain of like a, say low, high. Some P, you know, so one minus P, and P, right? So, so I think what's happening is the probability that X equals low 
given uh, let's see that it's but uh, see here's what we're missing the person is Uh, so the person, the, the blink in this sort of machine, he said that the machine reacts if the person is not sober, right? So we also got a probability of blinking given drunk. So what we're saying is that probability of, uh, um, probability X is low given that we are drunk, you, uh, Been drunk is the person is drunk and and the machine is blinking is greater than probably that X is low well um, well Right, so that when you're when you're, when it's drunk and it's blinking, you're more likely to get to the the low payout. Um, and then probably that X is high or low when you are D equals zero and B equals zero is greater than probability when X, that X is equals high given D equals zero, B equals zero. So in other words, that when you are, and I think that um, if I change, if I change this to being Lower if I change if I change this any if I change either of these uh, only one of these then this then this then this will switch. So in other words, that's when you're drunk, the blinking machines will have a lower payout, and you're also more likely to go to those to those machines. Okay, when when you're drunk, you're more likely to go to the low paying machines. That are blinking and they're more likely to have a low payout when you're not drunk you're more likely to go to the non-blinking machines and those are more likely to have a big payout a low payout hey, this the human subjects operate in this the casino uh people get screwed this is a, a trap this is why we call the greedy casino now we don't know anything i just copy here the, the parameterization we don't know anything about that. This is the underlying SCM. Uh, we arrived, this is around 14, 15. We go there to uh, Forney, uh, Pearl. We go down the casino after the conference, not during, to have a drinks. And then we decide to do the following. We have, at night, we don't have anything better to do. And we decide to do random sampling from the casino floor to try to understand what's going on in this game, in this type of machines. Now we start with plot picking samples at random. You pick, you pick the subject. And you follow the subject of our eye, the unit, and then you take notes. The guy play X1, machine type 1, and he got not winning. Why 1? This other, you pick another guy at random. They got X0, and he is not winning. Or this, and then you do that 10,000 times. You do a random sample. You collect L1 type of data. This is kind of the graph that you preserved. 
uh, we have no clue again, I'm sorry, no That's clue good. about the B and D. The only thing that you can see is the action that is the X and the outcome Y. Lo and behold, you get this 10,000 data points for the data set D1, and this is what the statistics come. The E of Y given X is equal to zero is equal to X is equal to one of winning, that is 15% of the time. You say, aha, uh -huh. we know that we are already suspicious here that something is wrong. Uh, let's call the, the Nevada game here commission because we know that they need to pay the folks 30% of the time. We already kind of suspicious with the level of service here in this casino in Tahoe is not good. It's, it's something wrong here, it's kind of shady. Then what we do is like we call this, the inspector come in the second day of the conference and does the following. He say, we show the data, do you want to them? And ask, how did you collect this data? Tell us. Uh, uh, and, and we say, oh, we do a random sample. You're careful about being really random. Uh, and then they, uh, so on. And they, they say, oh, you don't understand anything about experimental design. Let's be serious here. And I will do a randomized control trial because I read Fisher design of experiments. I will do a randomized control trial on the casino floor. Let's do like the FDA that is serious about causality. Lo and behold, he does, he does do that. And he ended up getting this data set. Randomization two step, random sample, flip the coin. The coin is the pie here. The decides, we even talk in the first part about the RAND. You flip the coin, the coin RAND ended up being one. This is do X equal to one. The coin ended up being zero. This is do X equal to zero. Lo and behold, we end up getting these statistics with 3,000 samples. He even comes to us and say, guys, you don't know experimental design or anything because we've collected 10,000 data points. I already have good bars here. And with 3,000, I already can, can get the answer. And the casino is kosher. This is a capitalist business. Uh, uh, it's true that they are not giving one dime, additional dime to the customers, but they are online and everything is fine. Don't bother us here in the Nevada Commission because we have more important things to do. And they throw the data in our face and live in an abrupt way. That's, uh, you know, that's the story, the way that I like the story. Um, now, we, we, question for us here is like, we're in the third day of the casino. We are studying students on machine learning. Now we have these two data sets. And the question is like, now we want to play the game. Oops. You want to play the game. But may, are, are we, uh, what, what should we do? Should we operate as, are we exchangeable? Are you like the usual population that is in the casino? So what's the... And, uh, uh, and you should just go there and do whatever you want. We don't know that being the effects. And what will happen? Are we exchangeable? There's interesting puzzle here because now that you already seen this data, these other guys didn't see the data because they didn't collect before. Then are we exchangeable? There's an interesting puzzle here um, that is quite cool, but um, I, will, I will skip. Now the point is like, assume, let's assume that it's exchangeable will be kind of experiencing this level of uh, regret or reward. Um, if you just decide to flip coins, you get this point 0.3. Then you say, no, neither is quite good. I know more. I took my machine learning class. I use one of these. I know that this is stateless. Then I will take, I, I will use one of the algorithms that you, I understand well. And, uh, and I'll do as exploration, I identify which arm is good. And this is what we get. That's the, the, the number of interactions. This is the probability of picking the correct actions. And this is the cumulative regret. Oracle minus what we're doing, while Oracle environment is the SCM. And this is that I just showed before. And this is what we get, essentially no learning. Probability of picking the correct action is 0.5. And you have some type of linear regret here. Sounds a bit pretty terrible. And we are kind of disappointed because this is exactly the same as the, the coin flip of the guy that came in the second day, the inspector from the, the the commission, and we thought that we are better than him. Um, we said, wow, I'm a sample efficient. Fisher is good that here are able to get the randomization, but uh, we like more the Robbins paper of 53 or the 82 that is doing this uh, uh, sample efficient thing. Uh, but the result is a little bit disappointing. The bandits minimize the short term regret based on the due distribution. That's the observation here. Now proposal, we arrive in the, in the fourth day and you will try to use our knowledge after having brainstorming and getting talks in causal inference. Let you say, oh, let's try to do L3 something. Because we know that L3, we have in our gut that L3 is more detailed. It's talking more about the SCM than layer two. Now we have this RDC here that we call the regret decision criterion that we're trying to find a star that optimized this guy here. Let me read this counterfactual sentence here. They say expected value of Y had X being X1 
given that x is equal to x0. Now, given that you play machine x0, I would like to know, I already play machine x0, I would like to know what would be my outcome, why had I played machine x1. Um, this is known in the literature for many years, this quantity at least called the effect of treated on the treated, ETT. It's like, no, no counterfactual. L3 has many counterfactuals. This is one of the elements in the zoo. Now, this is in context to what... Okay, so this is ETT, so... So... Um... So this is the idea that... Um... So effective treatment on TDA. So we're going to say like that we, um, so conditioning on, so we're now we're not, we're not conditioning on drunkenness or anything like that. We're saying like, all right, well, had this person been in the, so let's assume that this person is somebody who would have gotten the bad machine. We can add, we can kind of calculate what their expected value would have been had they gotten the good machine. And the interesting thing about this is that you don't actually need you can do this without kind of complicated counterfactual reasoning. Like this boils down to um, something that you can reason about on a DAG. All right, so this is a different, so you're finding the argmax for, I guess, x here, x1 here. Um, yes, yeah, so like this is, you know, so this is the example of like, say, um, you have a, a latch key program and you kind of run an experiment to see if it helps students get better ten, standardized test scores and then it does in the, in, the, in the experiment but at the end of the day the only students who end up showing for this um, program are people who um, uh, whose parents care enough to have sent them to a program or have enough money who, who if, if that program didn't exist they'd send them to somewhere else so like effective treatment of the untreated, it says like, all right, well, let's look at, let's take these people who actually got this, uh, who wanted, who actually got exposed to this program and look at the reward they get from being in the program and can compare it to the reward, reward that they would have gotten had they not been in the program. And um, which is different from what you get in a clinical trial. And uh, yeah. Trying to understand how this would hurt, right? So this agent, because then what you could do is you can kind of, um, because you can expand the DAG a little bit and do something cool like this. One second. I think I've lost my ability to stream. Anyway, I guess it's not going to work for me. Yeah, I was going to try and get my video coming up again. But you could do something where you look at, you can have some intermediate variable, which is like intent to, to impulse to do something. And then conditioning on your impulse, you can reason about what action to actually do. I'm, I don't know if I'm making any sense, but the idea is that like, uh, you could actually program this algorithm in a, agent's head if you made a distinct if you broke x into two components one is the intent to do an action and the act, which is the cause of the action itself and you can condition on uh intent to do an action and then kind of optimize the action huh it's pretty cool before that was why given do x that in reality can be written in layer three notation y sub x is equal to x. This is L2 uh, quantity in L3 notation. It's also called, called the counterfaction, but too weak because L2, well, ju we will just call the do. But anyhow, just so you to know that this is the same, you just don't have this condition in here. Now, observation that, okay, sounds good. Why we don't use that? The problem is if general counterfactuals, counterfactuals, 
are difficult or impossible, most time impossible to evaluate from data, even if you have interventional capability. This one again. Except for some. Effective treatment on the tree that can be evaluated from data. I guess he's going to, he, hopefully he'll say that. Special conditions such as if the variables are binary, if the backdoor condition holds, unconfoundedness, and so on. You can go to Pro Causality 2000, Pro 2000, Chapter 9, there is a discussion on that. But what we know from causality, that this is all three, but it's hard to evaluate. Well, almost impossible. Now, here comes the trick that is the, 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 the main contribution of the paper. It's a conceptual one and operational. Um, <clears throat> how, how could we evaluate expression like that that has this collision of world? Uh, given that I play machine x0, what would be the value of y had x being x1? Now, note here that the agent is about to machi play machine x0, it is about to play machine x0, which means that the unknown function f sub, f sub x of bd, recall, you have the u that in this case is bd, blinkness and drunkness, affecting the x. It could be one million dimension, but there is this b, u affecting x. Now, affecting means that x, you evaluate at f of x of this particular instantiation of BD that you don't observe. In this case, he's about to play X0. This is the evaluation. Now we pause, interrupt the decision flow, and wonder, yeah. I am about to play machine X0. Would I be better off going with my gut, with my intuition X0, or should I go against it, X1? That's the first time that I, I can envision that the AI He's saying, I am about to do something. I want to do something. So, yeah, so that's what I was suggesting. That he, rather than, uh, you could model explicitly the intent to do something. I'm about to play X0. And then uh, reason about uh, whether or not, uh, conditioning on your intuition, decide whether or not to go with, go with your gut or do something else. You can code that up using this framework pretty easily, I think something and i don't know the reason this is the whole point but, but uh, one one parenthesis guys don't 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 i want you to stay here in line but just you could do this comma context or state equal to c because everything that the agent knows what's affecting it this will take into account here they'll be exactly the same here there is this b and d and my claim that in in human decision making and in the future ai decision making there is always this you that is also affecting the X and Y. In human, is obvious. This is the whole industry, or advertisement industry, or negotiation. You are mm -hmm. the advertisement. I mean, the, we are trying to create these correlations and make the, the trick the people to have this kind of feeling that, and they will lead them to some decision without they knowing what, why they, they are doing something. Here's exactly the same. Now, close parentheses. I can elaborate in the question. Let's go back. I am about, I am the agent I want to play machine X zero, just one, that's like what I feel. Now I stop my urge and I say, would I be better off going with my gut or should I go against it? Now, if then this is step number two, we do not interrupt and we allow X zero to be X big equal to X zero. We are doing like the automata, like the quote unquote monkeys in the first day, the data set D1. That people just, I want to play the machine, I'm going to play the machine. Now, if you do stop, you do interrupt, and you make X is equal to rand, you just flip the coin, we are kind of untangling this thing. We are re removing the effect of U. Then this gives rise to the do distribution. That's the Fisher genius, amazing. I'm a big fan of the work. There are some other, but they were, this open up the whole literature from the 30s. Um, they, that's good. Now, Fisher is saying, I don't want the U. We are saying something else. We're saying, you do interrupt, you do the X is equal to the rent, but now you do rent, you get X1, but you say, but I wanted to do X0. Why? Because the X0 that we want has information about the latent space that I don't have access to. Then okay. this turns out, we can show that formally, but this turns out to be equal to exactly the meaning of this particular counterfactual Y sub X1 given X0. And then the, that's what we are kind of pushing and saying, this should be the criterion. Now, if you are a, a philosophical inclined or decision theorist, turns out that each of these one, there is EDT, there is the CDT, 
those are different types of decision theory. People like to say that CDT is better. You have all kinds of paradox that sometimes CDT is better. In reality, it is an interesting discussion, even though CDT obviously is in general better. But on top of What does RDT mean? Regret decision criteria. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, so I mean, this is a lot of talk, but what he's basically saying is that if you if you're the agent and you take and you don't know um, hmm. Yeah, let's say like you're trying to make rational decisions and all you can do is and you have this idea that like, oh, look, I feel like eating this candy bar. Well, the fact that you want to eat that candy bar is information that you can condition on as as in your so that's, that's the easiest takeaway like exactly the mechanics of how this works algorithmically it's a longer conversation but you can say like um if you are an agent that's kind of reacting like you're not conscious um, then your actions are just kind of reacting to the environment but uh if you could actually take your own impulses <clears throat> insofar as they come from an environment and model them as part of the environment. In other words, that you can condition on your own impulses. Then you can make better decisions in in, cer in certain con in scenarios, which um, I argue are not they're not in trivial scenarios because, I mean, that casino problem seemed a bit um, contrived, but frankly, like it if. The distinction there is, is you know, it's one of the most fundamental fundamental distinctions between what we consider to be consciousness and 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 or, or sentience and non sentience or free will and no, and no free will like the 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 ability to use introspection as information in decision making, and that's what he's trying to uh, kind of use causality to, to create a framework for here. Always oh, RDT is exactly the combination of this two. Is the sweet spot. We are, we are combining both. We are, we are, the, the joke here that I usually do use is like Fisher drug, pun intended, because it's using the drug plans randomized control, Fisher drug of doing the randomization to avoid the confounding bias here of the pesticides and the crops and the bias of the, the farmers. Uh, it was too strong because it completely removed the effect of the U, the late, which you want in some way that could be bad, but we want a little bit to. And this is the, the meaning of the counterfactual, layer three, this kind of layer three counterfactual. Then if you do that, you get this kind of, I just collapsed here the previous one that was L2. You get the blue line that essentially you are able to converge as expected. Eventually you have this kind of nice behavior that you're able to learn what's the best policy. Uh, and you have also, we could use data from the first day, like the data set one from the people in the casino floor, we can get a bump here because this the, the same the same as I said in task two, this, there is some kind of relationship between the arms. Then you can leverage and get a little bit of juice. I like more from going from the red to obviously, from the, the red to the blue, because I think uh, at the time, uh, Yuda and I were kind of very surprised with having this type of counterfactual randomization in concert to fish sharing randomization. But this is still cool. And now, once you have reestablished the consistency of the procedure, now the game is to put on top of this one here. For sure, you like to converge faster. Um, then we can do the same combining, not only the, the data set D1 that is observational, but you can combine observe, uh, data set D2 that is experimental. The same way, there's some kind of constraints there that allows us to put one curve on the top of the other. Now, this is the task. Uh, in reality, we can ignore the data or not. I just mentioned not, but uh, the, 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 the dimension here is like, there is a new, uh, the, there is a new task, uh, a new type of pi that take the X prime into account that is evaluate, evaluation of the U, we detach uh, the evaluation of the U from the action that you'll be committing under this counterfactual randomization. We still need the coin. It's just we need to be clever and understand what it means that then everyone now can do counterfactual randomization. Um, <clears throat> there's an interesting consequence here. I, I'm going really quick now. New task, uh, a new type of pie that take the X prime into account that is evaluate evaluation of Okay, so I think that's what he means. This X prime here is the, so that, well. Well, I don't actually, 
wouldn't pi go into x prime? Um, I think he was saying that like the x prime. Um, then we can do the same combining, not only the, the data set the one that is observational, but you can combine observe, uh, data set the two that is experimental. The same way, there's some kind of constraints there that allows us to put one curve on the top of the other. Now, this is the task. Uh, in reality, you can ignore the data or not. I just mentioned not, but uh, the, the, the dimension here is like there is a new, uh, the, there is a new task, uh, a new type of pi that take the x prime into account that is evaluate, evaluation of the u. We detach uh, the evaluation of the u from the action that will be committing under this counterfactual randomization. We still need the coin. It's just we need to be clever is, uh, and understand what it is. Human is just one slide summary. Uh, can humans be left out of the loop? When do you need the human? Now, that's an interesting question. Of a simple observation from the RDC, from what we discussed here on the regret decision criteria. If the y sub x given x prime is equal to the y given x, y given do x, this means that the human intuition has no value. There's no information in the gut. Then if that's the case, the, in other words, the human expert could be replaced without sacrifi sacrificing the performance of the system. At least, in other words, at least in principle, full autonomy, autonomy can be achieved in the context that this holds here. Then it's nice to have this condition in the paper. In this paper, we can go there. Yeah, I don't really understand what this X prime means. And, um... Because wouldn't this just be, it'd be nice to see examples where that's true, but. 64, R64, uh, the contribution that is the Markov properties, L2, layers L2, L3, that helps us to establish whether the agent or the, the agent embedded in some type of environment can be autonomous or not. There is the discussion about optimality of agent layer two that is experimental, interventional, and counterfactual agent versus autonomy, and for different types of environments. We're trying to be general here in terms of what is the environments. And we have kind of nice results in the sense that yeah, there's no surprise result, but this is my last slide here and I'll go to this, the conclusion. Um, there is this nice result that the human, if you compare the human that is red versus or the coin or the, the layer two kind of randomization, human is much worse than the coin. Now, if you're uh, still with me, thanks for uh, surviving and for being so brave. Um, usually I say that in class, be a hero. Um, summary of RL. Um, or CRL capabilities. The first one that we discuss, our first task is like online learning is too costly and learning from scratch is usually impractical. Still, the assumptions of offline learning are rather satisfied in practice. So it seems hard situation. Um, the goal here is to move towards more realistic learning uh, scenarios where the two modalities come together and we'll like to extract as much, as, uh, as much causal information as possible from the confounded data, or more broadly, from the imperfect data, if you're in the data fusion kind of mood, and using it embedded in the most efficient way. Um, then you have the second task, that is when and where to intervene. Agents, you, agents usually uh, have a fixed policy space, a fixed set of actions, and intervene is, a, is usually assumed to be uh, assumed beneficial. Uh, there's a typo here, I think. This is state of affairs, this is our goal observation. Our goal here is to understand when interventions are needed and whenever this is the case, uh, what should be changing the system uh, in a more surgical way so as to bring about the desirable uh, outcome. Um, the third task is counterfactual decision-making that is related to intentionality, regret, and free will, if you want to ask me your autonomy uh, as well. Um, the agents will only have autonomy they, when they start asking, I'm about to do that, I don't know why. What we're, this is the emergency. You can ask me to connect with Harari and many other cool stuff, but this is the, 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 the key point. But uh, let me focus. Um, no, no tangents, Elias. Um, imagine my students sometimes suffering. Huh? The, uh, my defense is a rich topic. Um, <laughs> Agents uh, act in a reflexive manner without considering the reasons or the causes for behaving in a certain way. The goal here is to endow agents with the capability of taking their own intent into account, which will lead to a new notion of regret based on the counterfactual randomization. 
with implications uh, uh, throughout. Um, the third task that I didn't talk much, uh, just mentioned in the beginning, is generalizability or having a general, generalizable and robust decision making. Uh, knowledge acquired by an agent is usually circumscribed to the domain where it was deployed. Our goal is to agents, the agents to extrapolate knowledge, making more robust and generalizable claim, claims by leveraging the causal structural invariances that are shared across the environments. Very cool work is my initial how I started even in the problem of transportability and how to leverage the structural invariances. Um, the fifth problem or fifth dimension, I would say, um, learning causal models by combining observations and experiments. Agents have a fixed causal model constructed from the templates. It could be a multi-arm bandit, could be a Markov decision process, it could be the instrumental variable and so on. Uh, the front door, the back door, and you have napkin and so on, or from fixed background knowledge as we discussed. Now the goal here is to allow the agents to systematically combine the observations in intervention that is already constructing, sorry, is already collecting to construct an equivalent class, equivalence class, or eventually a causal model, by equivalence class of causal models. Uh, check the work by Amin Jabber as well, is another one that I didn't cite here, I think explicitly. It's pretty cool about the equivalence class and causal models. Go to the causal AI, Jabber, J-A-B-E-R. Um, causal imitation learning. Mimicking is one of the common, is one of the most common ways of learning. Whenever the demonstrators has a different causal model, imitation may lead to disastrous side effects. Our goal here is to understand the conditions so that imitation by behavioral cloning, most common, uh, is valid and leads to faster learning. Otherwise, which is the case that is not always the case, intro introduce uh, more refined imitation modalities. Very cool new work. Um, the coming from the expert, given that you don't have access to the reward that this expert is getting. All right, generalized policy learning, when aware of the intervening kind of factors of making generalizing robustness. Okay, so this is a useful uh, tutorial for kind of understanding how these ideas come together, I think. If you're watching this, you're probably wondering, like, wow, this is, it's not even technical, which is confusing. I've been playing around with it for a while, and um, so the ideas make sense to me, and kind of seeing them put together very concisely is useful, but um, ah, there's a lot to work with here, and it's, um, I recommend, like, if you ever wanted to uh, try some of these, these ideas out, get it to work on an open AI gym example, or make a game, or a board game, and where, or a good world where it'll work, it'll be more compelling. Um, with that, I am going to adjourn for today. Thanks for watching.